Sofia Adorgué was born in the city of Buenos Aires in Argentina. Sofia is the eldest of five siblings, three brothers and one sister. Her father is a physician with a passion for academic medicine, and her mother is a homemaker, having raised five children, all close in age and less than two years apart. My family in Argentina, very rich in terms of culture and in, in terms of tradition. My uh, great-grandfather had actually been an entrepreneur and had also at one point been an immigrant, and he was very involved in the forming of cities. There's actually a city that's named Adrogué, and actually his name was Esteban Adrogué, and my son is named after. In 1975, Sofia's father received a grant from the World Health Organization to work at Tufts New England Medical Center in Boston. The family lore often refers to this move to America as 14 suitcases and a dream, and the nine-year-old Sophia quickly took on adult responsibilities because of her English-speaking skills. I, in essence, enrolled us in school. I would go grocery shopping with my mother and functioned as her translator. As we learned to speak English through the TV, a lot of Sesame Street, soap operas for my mother, and a lot of uh, learning as you went and making do. The family's plan was to return to Argentina after one year, but economic and political turmoil in Argentina and a growing love for the U.S. and its opportunities changed their plans. Sofia's father was recruited by Baylor College of Medicine and the Methodist Hospital in Houston, and they moved there in 1978. Soon after, Sofia enrolled in school at St. Agnes Academy. St. Agnes ended up being an absolutely nurturing venue. Their mantra and mission is about intellectual curiosity, about integrity, about social conscious, and I really felt that while there and have remained active. When college application time approached, Sophia's choices were shaped by family traditions. You preferably lived at home while attending school, and medicine or the law is the rite of educational passage. So, after being accepted to both UT Plan 2 and Rice, Rice's proximity to home won out. I never quite understood what led me to do that path of law versus the path of medicine, but I was always intrigued by the humanities. I liked the written word, and I was drawn to a, a major that's not even in existence anymore. That was legal studies with a basis and focus on philosophy and history. When law schools came knocking, U of H's Law Center made her an offer she couldn't refuse, a full academic scholarship with a little extra, contingent upon maintaining a high GPA. I knew I needed to deliver, and it was an intense time. I would lie to you if I didn't tell you that I had a goal. Um, it had to be the best I could do, and every waking moment, I was studying. And the hard work paid off. After graduation, 17 job offers poured in from around the country. I had offers in Texas, I had offers in uh, New York, I had offers in Washington, D.C. By that point, I had fallen in love with my husband, Sten Gustafson, also Rice graduate, also law school graduate. My husband was originally from Kansas City. He wasn't quite ready for New York, so we ended up in D.C. Great opportunity clerked with a law firm that was composed of all federal court of appeals or U.S. Supreme Court clerks. Really pretty amazing. I was, I was in intellectual heaven. The next goal was to become an associate and then a partner at a law firm. Eager to return to family and her new U.S. home, Sophia moved back to Houston, recruited by Sussman Godfrey, and ultimately joining Gray, Reed, and McGraw as a member, always as a commercial business litigator. Indeed, when I arrived about eight years ago, there was 40 of us. We're almost 120 now. It's been great growth, though. It is growth with top-notch people. I'm one of the youngest in terms of the, as partners. I, many times, I was one of the few women, too. But quite frankly, you've got to create your life. You've got to create happiness. You have to design it. There are days it's harder to create and design than harder days than others. But the reality is you carpe diem, seize the moment, and go forward. And go forward, she did. Sophia nurtured her love of the humanities to become a prolific legal writer and speaker, and engaged in numerous nonprofit boards and community efforts. What happens is you get lucky enough to be asked to serve on a nonprofit board. 
and then perhaps lucky enough to chair it, as I did with Girls Inc. before I was 30. And then you get asked to get involved with others, whether it's theater under the stars or a Memorial Hermann and its 13 plus hospitals. Or you get asked to give back to St. Agnes or Rice University or U of H Law School. I was lucky enough to receive Outstanding Houstonian, then Outstanding Texan with, among others, Joe Olstein, and then Outstanding American, which is something that is shared by Elvis Presley and President John F. Kennedy, among others. It's quite a diverse group that have received it. The paradigm for me and Pinnacle was the creation of a leadership summit that has taken place for the last 10 years at Rice, where we basically seek to educate, to engage and empower a group of 300 plus very motivated students. I'm Minerva Perez. In 2008, Sofia was recruited by newswoman Minerva Perez to appear as a co-host and co-producer for the PBS series Latina Voices, Smart Talk, addressing business and current affairs and seeking to enlighten a diverse community. With so much activity surrounding her life, Finding a balance for her passions of family, profession, and community has been a constant challenge. It's a balance in quotations. Uh, it is not symmetry, it's asymmetry. You truly are prioritizing on a daily basis, sometimes moment by moment basis, on what you can accomplish and what you have to accomplish and what you will accomplish. Recently, Sophia realized a dream she thought would never come true. I had always dreamt to be able to go to school on the East Coast. And at 40, ever too late, so don't give up, I accomplished it. I was able to go back and do a three-year program at Harvard Business School. And I'm the first and only woman to date asked to be the graduation speaker. I tell my children, uh, you've got to be prepared. You've got to be ready to perspire. You've got to be ready to persevere. Don't lose your perspective. Obviously have the passion. And then your panache. Whatever is that little something extra about you. Maybe part of my panache is that I wasn't born in this country. Whatever it may be, that that special little point of differentiation you can bring to the table. And the end result ideally will be something positive. But if it's not for that moment, if there is adversity, you'll have given it your all. But I think the relentless pursuit of something I think that's critical.